Everybody feeling good tonight? Praise the Lord. Hebrews 12, 23, Genesis 6 and 9, and 2 Peter 2, 6 and 9, through 9. Amen. This is a community announcement. You might spread the word. The uh, natural gas uh, companies or a company is uh, coming our way to uh, run the service lines to homes and the church. Still going to be some time before, of course, hookup. But uh, I talked to Suburban Gas, which which has been the uh, church co-op uh, company for a, a few years. They to, She told me today that if it would be good if I would announce to any of you that are going to natural gas, if you don't want any more suburban gas, propane gas, you need to call them and let them know that so they won't automatically come out and fill up your tank. Then you'll have a whole lot of, whole lot of propane gas when the natural gas comes in. And by the way, that I think it costs $90 an hour to 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 pump that propane back out, and then they don't give you but 75 cents a gallon. So by the time you pump 75 cents a gallon out of a hundred gallon, then you've lost you've lost it. So uh, I, I, those figures may not be accurate, but if you understand what I'm saying, so spread the word to those around, because uh, there's a whole lot of people not in here that that need to hear that. God bless you. Amen. Hebrews 12:23. The Bible said to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Genesis 6, 9 said these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Have you picked up on any any uh, continuing thought there? Have you? Have you? Just men made perfect, and Noah was a just man. Second Peter two six through nine. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot, not only Lot, but just Lot. You got me? Vexed with filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. You see here we have two different types of men or categories of people, that is the just and the unjust. I want to talk to you for a little while tonight about adjusting the just. I had my wife to write down some uh, verses here, and she said, I have no clue what that's going, what you're going to talk about. Adjusting the just, and I don't know if you do either, but here we go, right? <laughs> Look at somebody and say, I want to be adjusted tonight. <laughs> you may be seated. <clears throat> just, the, the word just here simply by implication means innocent, holy, righteous. Unjust, of course, by implication would mean treacherous, especially heathen, unrighteous, or sinful. Sinful people and 
unrighteous people don't need an adjustment. They need a whole makeover, right? They need a whole workover. They need to be born uh, again. Are you helping me? They need to be born again, and when you get born again, you get, you get this uh, sinful nature converted to a divine nature, and you get on the nature of God, and you don't have to sin anymore. Now, there's a, there's a doctrine that goes on that says you, 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 no man can live a, without sinning. Well, you got to sin. You got to sin every day. That was the doctrine that was taught years ago, and it's still in effect. And, uh, but uh, Daddy asked one of those people one time, he said, well, can you live 15 minutes without sinning? And uh, the guy said, well, I think so. Daddy said, well, just live it 15 minutes at a time. So if we have to, we'll live it 15 minutes at a time, won't we? But ungodly people need to be born again. Unjust people need to be born of water and of the Spirit. But just men just need some adjusting sometimes. There's not any of us that have been born again that does not need some preaching to after we've been born again. There's not any of us that, that have uh, just automatically became perfect and, and uh, everything was fine and this old nature of ours was uh, dead. If it was, then we'd be on the other, in, on the other side. But, but since we're not, we have to have some adjusting. But Solomon, during uh, it, it, it's, it's easy to see by these examples that just men, of course, were righteous. But Solomon, during his time of grappling with life, vanity, etc., he says in Ecclesiastes 7, 20, For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. He was feeling the pressures of this world, and he said there's not a just man. Well, I believe there are just men. Again, Solomon was in this time of grappling with life and the problems of life, but God can get us born again so we can become righteous people and godly people and holy people. Uh, now, even Paul had his struggles. Philippians 3, 12 through 16 said, Not as though I had already attained. Attained meant to seize or grab a hold of. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect or complete, but I follow after if that I may apprehend or seize again to attain, to, uh, to get a hold of, to receive. Not that, if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Isn't it wonderful that we don't have to remember our old sinful past, but we can leave it in the past and do like Paul said, I press, even though we hadn't attained already or become perfect yet, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore... As many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, for until we have already attained, let us walk by the same room, let us, be, let us mind the same thing. One translation or version, maybe I should say, said, I don't mean to say I'm perfect. Paul said, not as though I had already obtained, either were already perfect. He's saying that this version is said this way. I don't mean to say I'm up, I am perfect. I haven't learned all I should even, uh, all I should even yet. But I keep working toward that day when I will finally be all that Christ saved me for and wants me to be. I'm reaching. I need some adjusting. I need some help. I hadn't made it yet. Oh, glory. Let me tell you something. I've been living for God. Well, let me back up. Let me say 
I was baptized when I was six years old, so that would have been 66 years ago. Later, I got the Holy Ghost and been striving in this journey for 66 years, but I hadn't made it yet. That's why I keep coming back to church is so I can get somebody to adjust me a little bit and line me up one more time. Isn't that right? Boy, is that the way it is with you folks? Is it? Amen. Romans 7, 18 through 24 said, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. Paul again to the Romans with, uh, is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I do, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Anybody, anybody have that same problem as Paul has? I think we do. If, if you're shaking your head, no, you don't got that problem. You're just telling a story, that's all. Right? Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more that I do, th it, do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that which I would do. When I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am. This is the Apostle Paul, writer of many books of the New Testament, saying, Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He's saying, who's going to get, who's going to preach another message to me? Who's going to talk to me again? Who's going to tell me what to do? Who's going to adjust me and get me lined back up? I looked at that word adjust, and it mean, means to arrange. It means to put into proper position. It means to alter by a small amount so as to fit or be right for use. Adjust to adjust simply means sometimes just a little bit of adjusting is all it takes to make the thing run right. Right? We're not all bad. We're righteous people. We just the just need some adjusting. Some minor adjustments and some major adjustments. If your spine is out of line a little, it can give you major problems. Past um, about three months, my right shoulder has hurt me from this area back up into my neck and coming down into the back of my arm. And literally, it hurt so bad that, that I could not drive without just writhing in pain. And, 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 and I had a lot of faith, so I let Sister Pat drive. But, but uh, for, for, in, in fact, uh, she drove today because, because of that condition. But you know what? They did a, an MRI on me. And they found a little bit of bulging disc in the back in my neck back here, but not enough to do surgery on. Hallelujah. But they couldn't find what was wrong. It was so minor as far as being able to see where a pinched nerve was. Apparently it was a pinched nerve that they could not detect it or find it. What am I saying? I'm saying it was so small, but it hurt so bad. I'm talking about three months' time. And uh, uh, I, I could, I could uh, sit down, and when I'd sit down, it would hurt. If I lay flat down, I could get some relief. But who can lay down all the time? And who can, you know, so I, I, I would get up. We'd sit at a restaurant, and I'd get to hurting so bad. I'd get up and walk around. Till I get some relief, then I would set back down. But all, you know, uh, uh, again, a, a surgery wasn't what was needed. All it needed somehow or another is a little bit of adjusting on it. And things can get started lining back up. And, and, and you go to a chiropractor, most of them will tell you, you need to come back. 
right? There's not many of them that say, I, I guess, that would say that just this one adjustment will fix you. What am I saying tonight? I'm saying sometime one adjustment won't get us lined back up like we ought to be. So we have to keep coming back. We have to keep coming back. Amen. Sometimes our vehicles need alignment. They're pulling to the left or pulling to the right. And it's a constant struggle. Have you ever drove a vehicle that was pulling to the left or right? Have you? Wave at me or act like you're pulling to the back to the right. There you go. It, you know, and all you need is a little bit of adjustment because if you don't, the tires will wear out, right? And it'll wear you out. And it causes pressure in the wrong place. Medication. You get the wrong dosage of medication. If it's not correctly prescribed and taken correctly, you get in trouble. You get too much blood pressure medicine. You get dizzy. You get weak, right? Feel bad. But if you get it just right, then you can feel better. I remember Sister Snyder, Pat's mother, I remember her sitting at our bar over there at the house, the little little breakfast setting, and uh, and she checked her uh, blood pressure, Brother Tucker. You'd have to know her to appreciate this, I guess. But she checked her blood pressure, and it was extremely high. Brother Benny, she said, I'm not going to turn that one in. <laughs> so... So you can check your blood pressure, but if you don't adjust it, you're going you're gonna to get in trouble, right? I, I know by my own experience of, 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 of blood sugars, if I, uh, if I eat too much carbs, whether it be carbs by, 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 by sugar or carbs by bread or potatoes or whatever, then my sugar is going to rise. Then I, then I pump some insulin in. But if I pump too much insulin in, then it, 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 it's going to drop out to the bottom. And on, on my way to church, my, my blood sugar dropped to 55 right before I left to come to church. But I look good, don't I? <laughs> but but, but I, I, I made the wrong adjustment. When I took my insulin for supper tonight, I didn't eat enough carbs to, to, to make that balance. What I'm saying is you got to have the right amount of the mixture of all of these. It's, it's like a car, brother. brother. Um, it, 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 you know, it's got to have air, it's got to have electricity, and it's got to have fuel. And you get too much fuel, you're going to chug a lug, you're going to choke out. You don't get enough air, it's not going to be. So you got to get that carburetor. you got to get everything mixed just right. If you're gonna if you're gonna float along and have no problem, what are you saying tonight? I'm just saying one more time. All of us have to keep coming back for what? An adjustment. Get the brakes too tight, you'll burn something up. You get them too loose, you can't stop in time, right? You know you can go out back here to this water cooler, can't you, brother Benny, brother Robert? Can't you go back here to this water cooler and, and find an adjustment on that thing? And if you take that just right, you can shoot the water out over the top of it. But if you don't adjust it right, then it's going, not going to get enough. You have to suck it out of that pipe. But if you get it just right, you can just lean over there and get, get it right. Oh, God, help us. I want to get it right, don't you? Amen. Amen. Galatians 1, 6, Paul to the Galatians said, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that hath called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Here these Galatians had apparently been so soon removed from Jesus, from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. He was, Paul was marveled since they had been so soundly converted, 
had such an experience with God that he was surprised at them being so soon removed. Oh, God, help us to get rooted and grounded on this truth so we won't be so soon removed. He said, him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. All they can do is take a few words out of it and try, try to change it and get it out of adjustment. And then they'll have a false doctrine. That's what they've done many times. But though we, verse 8 said, but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which he have received, let him be accursed. Let me tell you something. This message is fixed. We don't adjust it to us. We adjust to it. Right? And he gave some apostles, Ephesians 4, 11 through 14. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. What for? For the perfecting or adjusting, if you will, of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of, of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Thank God for apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting or the adjusting. Somebody say, preach to me, preacher. Somebody say, adjust me every time I come to church. Get me lined back up so I will be in line with the, with the gospel, with the message, with the truth. Isn't that right? Have you ever seen anybody that need their attitude adjusted? Oh, I have. I remember a story Brother Ronnie Daddy told. Mother said, I can just about hear Frank, that... Uh, she wasn't loud, I don't imagine. She was just, uh, Frank, that, that uh, screen door needs fixing. Apparently there was a dog or cat or something, Brother John, that busted a hole in it, or maybe it was Sam or Tim, I don't know. Probably wasn't me. <laughs> but somebody, somebody, something happened. And um, I don't know if she told him two or three times, and he just did not want to get... He didn't want to fix it or whatever, and he just it just got under his skin, I guess, a little bit. And he knew it was bothering him. So I remember he said, you know what I did? He said, I went to pray, and when I come back, I fixed the screen door. What are you saying? I'm saying prayer really helps us get adjusted. Have you ever felt your attitude get, getting bad, cranky, mean, ugly? Don't look at her. I mean, <laughs> maybe it's the other way. Don't look at him. But have you? But you know what? A good old apostolic church service, talking in tongues, praying through, Submitting to God can get us back in line. No, no wonder people, no wonder so many people divorce. You don't usually find people divorcing that stay in church all the time. Both parties. Right? Christians just don't normally, you heard me, I said just don't normally divorce. Getting heavy in now, isn't it? I said normally. Oh, yeah. 
Proverbs 4, 18 said, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more until the perfect day. If you are a just person, then you are a light to this world. That's why we as righteous people need to stay just. And to stay just, we have to be a just one. 24, 16 of Proverbs said, For a just man falleth, wow, a just man falleth seven times, but watch, but what happens? And riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Hey, we make mistakes, we fall, we do wrong, but you know what the just man is going to do? He's going to get back up. He's going to go again. He's going to go again. You know, uh, you remember Alan Ogg? Some of y'all remember Brother Alan Ogg? Brother Alan Ogg said, if you get up one more time than you get down, you're going to get up on that great getting up morning. <laughs> so don't get so out of, it, out of adjustment that you can't be adjusted and you won't get back up again. Hey, get back up. If you fail, get back up. If you fall down, get back up. If you mess up, come back to church. Isn't that right? Proverbs 24, 15, the living Bible said, Oh, evil man, leave the upright man alone and quit trying to cheat him out of his rights. Don't you know that, he, that this good man, though you trip him up seven times, will each time rise again? But one calamity is enough to lay you low or the, the evil man low. You've heard the term mis, mid-course correction, haven't you? You know what mid-course correction simply means or has to do with it? It's a navigational correction made in the course of a ship, an airplane, rocket, a space vehicle. At some point between the beginning and and the end of the journey. And I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, we're on a heavenly journey. And because of the winds blowing, because of the winds of this world, society, and we have to touch this world. We have to deal with this world. We have to live in this world. The winds can blow us sideways sometimes. But, the airplane and the ship, they, they may depend on autopilot. But as saints of God, we can't depend on autopilot. We got to come back to church and say, preach to me again. Get me back. I'm, I may be mid-course right now of my journey. So I want to get right back on course and have heaven as my goal. Nothing else matters, but heaven matters to me more than anything else. Adjust me. It, it's dying daily. It's checking to see if you can still feel the Holy Ghost, if you can still talk in tongues. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm closing here shortly. Sister Pat, come to, come to this music. I want to check my temperature, my spiritual temperature, every now and then. I want to be able to get in the spirit where I can speak in tongues again. Sister, Sister, uh, Sister Johnson, what was her first name? Don Johnson's wife. Jean. Who? Jean. Jean. Sister Jean Johnson. She said, one experience will God will not keep you indefinitely. One time talking in tongues, now she said that. I didn't say it, but she said, she said that. One speak time speaking in tongues, she is simply saying, will not keep you indefinitely. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to judge the situation, but I will tell you, for me, I want to be able to know that I can talk in tongues again. Anybody here feel like that? Oh, yeah. If it takes a good old hot service, if it takes somebody stirring me up, 
I want to I want to talk to God again and just know I still got it. Oh, that old song says, let me feel your spirit one more time. Reassure me, Lord, that I am thine. We don't, we don't have to sing it. What's the rest of that? If I should ever, if I should ever doubt, you surely bring me out. Just let me feel your spirit one more time. Oh, yeah, give me a key. That, that's a good song, too. Let's sing that in first. It's going to be higher than what I just had it. Let me feel your spirit one more time. Yeah, reassure me, Lord, that I am thine. Yeah, if I should ever die, you'd surely bring me out. Oh, let me feel your spirit one more time. Oh, let me feel your spirit one more time. Yeah. Sure, me, Lord, that I am thine. Yeah, if I should ever doubt, you'd surely bring me out. Yeah, let me feel your spirit one more, one more time. Sing it. Oh, let me feel your spirit one more time. You know what we have to do to be able to feel the Spirit? Get lined up again. Get adjusted again. Isn't that right? We're in a spiritual mechanic shop tonight, aren't we? Give us a good tune-up. Oh, yeah. The Bible said, Luke 14, 14, Thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recomp recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Oh, yeah, he's still working on me to make me what I want to be. It took him just a week to make the sun, moon, and star. Work on you one more time. Why don't you bow your heads and say, God, why don't you work on me again tonight? If there's anything in me that I shouldn't be, shouldn't be, take it out, purge me, cleanse me, help me to be what you want me to be. I want to operate like you want me to operate. I want to feel your presence one more time. I want to know that you're near me, God. I want to be in line with truth and line with godliness and holiness. Help us to be the testimony and the witness we need to be. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name. God bless you. Sunday morning, church again. Got revival, don't we, this weekend? Is that right? Bring somebody and see what God will do.